Thanks, Joe. Well, one of the things that I like about using ADS as an RF module design tool is that you get to link your layout with a schematic instead of just working with a netlist. So having this link between the layout and the schematic allows you to see the nodal connectivity of your layout in real time, and it also allows you to document important design parameters, things like bond wire shape. But even with a schematic link which shows wires and unconnected nets, there's still the potential that you might not see this misconnection. So to really gain full confidence that your module is ready to manufacture, it's usually a good idea to run a full LVS to compare the module layout with the actual schematic. So now I will demonstrate this capability on a multi-technology module that I designed in ADS. So I've integrated three different pieces of IC technology into this laminate package, a gas HBT power amplifier, an SOI switch, and a CMOS controller. And I've brought each of these technologies into my ADS workspace using the multi-technology capability in ADS. So you can see that the IC layers that I've nested from each of the technologies into the laminate technology stack appear on the top right. So one of the enablers of this LVS capability is the native VIA feature, which is new in ADS 2014. So with these new native VIAs, layer connectivity through the VIAs is established automatically without the need for separate pin-based components. So there's no need to include every VIA in the schematic to get a working LVS. The layout tool is now smart enough to know that adjoining metal layers connected through a native VIA are indeed on the same net. And this also makes module routing much easier. So now I will show you how I designed an RF choke inductor for my power amplifier using the routing tool. So I'm going to start with the top metal, and in this case metal 1 is the top metal, it's red. And then I will drop down to my second metal layer, metal 2, which is blue. And then I'll eventually pop back up and connect the power amplifier output to the DC bias feed. So the native vias automatically connect the metal 1 and metal 2 nets. But what happens if I messed up and I forgot to add the last via to connect my DC choke to the power amplifier output? Well, it's true that if I'm zoomed in, I might see this error through a connectivity wire. But these wires aren't always that easy to spot, especially in a high-density design. But I can still catch it by running a module-level LVS in this design. Now, in this case, I don't need any device recognition rules. The connections on this module are based strictly on pin nets. So now I will run the module level LVS, and I see that it flags some nodal mismatches which are related to the missing via. So, for example, it tells me that the output bond wire is supposed to be connected to the bypass capacitors and to the RF matching capacitors, but in my layout it's only connected to the matching capacitors. So if I fix this problem by putting my native via back in there and then rerun the LVS. It will now show me that the layout does match the schematic. Now another example might be if I misconnected a bond wire. So in a different spot on my module layout I have an extra bond pad on the substrate which I can bond the input wire to to tune my RF input matching inductance. But what happens if I accidentally connected the next pad over which is the the first stage collector choke to that to that input pad. Well, once again, the module level LVS will catch this error, and it will also tell me that my wire shape parameter is different. It's not matching the schematic anymore either. So that's module level LVS. Back to you, Joe.